oh my god life has been life me ah! it has been wow a time good morning afternoon evening whatever time you are watching this just know god is good and has saved me from the trenches of life and continues to uplift me through all of my hard times because talk about um ghetto look at me look at me look at me this is this has been life so i'm happy to say that hopefully i am back on track i'm back on track hopefully i am back on track to doing the things that make me happy and fulfill my soul so yeah i guess let's give some updates on life where do i start well i guess let's just just start from where things were downhill but uphill but definitely just you know have uh yeah i can feel like this now because of the grace of god um but just know your girl is still going through it every day is different but i am grateful for my family and my friends for the support and love and i really just appreciate life and just want to do things differently and actually trust and believe that i can do anything that i really set my mind to so let's yeah let's start from the beginning so in february we found out that we were pregnant <laughs> It was exciting to hear and to know that we will be bringing life into this world. We were set um, that it was a boy. We knew that like that was our son. It was gonna be you know our second child. We're one and not one and done, two and done. When I took my pregnancy test, I was about like five weeks pregnant at the time, which was you know still exciting very early in the game but we told everybody like because we were just so excited we just told everybody i really didn't have any fear in my heart that anything would have went wrong i just didn't i did not have any of those fears in my heart but at the same time i wasn't as proactive about the pregnancy like i was for my first daughter i just didn't feel urged to do the things that I said I was going to do. I did record content like here and there, but like taking like the weekly bump pics, cause I was, I was already showing pretty much once after I took the pregnancy test, but to take like pregnancy pictures, to buy like a bump pillow, to buy like baby clothes at most, like I created a registry. I made a Pinterest account to like put in like what kind of room I wanted and what kind of baby shower I wanted and all these things. Cause like I said, we were set, we were having a son and that was that. On March 20th, so we found out we were pregnant on February 23rd. That shit says fucking pregnant. Irving! On March 20th, I was at the eight week mark so that we could have our eight week checkup to see like how the baby's doing and all that stuff. We were so excited. And it was just a lackluster type of appointment. And here is a little recap of that day when we went to our March 20th appointment. So I just got back from my ultrasound. Um, Based on my period, I am eight weeks and one day pregnant. But based on my ultrasound, I am measuring two weeks behind. I, I, I've been so sad since um, the news. Um, when we got to the the doctor's office, I uh, everything was pretty normal. Um, they did a in. I don't know. They put the probe for the ultrasound inside of me instead of uh, the gel on top. I'm pretty sure with my first daughter, we did it on top. But this time, um, I guess they do it inside, which is fine. Um, she didn't even have the probe in for five minutes. And she was like, when did you say your period was? your last period was the first day of your last period and I'm like oh January 22nd and she's like okay and then a minute later she's like 
does one measurement and is like, oh, you're measuring two weeks behind showing that the baby is like at six weeks, but you're supposed to be eight weeks in one day. And um, didn't really say anything else after that. Just kept measuring, taking pictures of my ovaries, taking pictures of my uterus, um, took the probe out. And if I didn't ask, if I didn't ask for this picture, if I didn't ask, because Kamara's been wanting to see, like she's so excited for her sibling. And when we had her ultrasound, the first one, we literally got back like 12 photos and she didn't even print any. So like, if I didn't ask, like I wasn't even gonna be able to have this. Like I wasn't even gonna have this. Um, so that made me very concerned, like, why wouldn't she give me anything um but then she was like oh the nurse is gonna talk to you so they sent you into sent me and my husband into a room and while we were in that room it felt like we were sitting there for literally like an hour before somebody came in and a nurse comes in and then she's just like when did you say your last period was again writes it down and then walks out So again, no explanation as to what the hell is going on. She just was like, oh, I need to go talk to the doctor. And then she leaves. And then she comes back. Again, that felt like an hour. Comes back again and is like, all right, so you're going to come back in 10 days. I'm going to make help you make an appointment in the front. Again, no explanation, no nothing, anything like that. So... I was just trying not to stress. I really hate. And then ugh, another thing she kept doing was we're going to set an appointment. I I hope you have good luck. I hope I hope good luck to you. Like best of luck to you. Like everything I hope it goes okay. Good luck. Like what the f does that mean? Good luck for what? Like you're not even saying anything to me. Why would I need luck? Like what's actually going on? Um and I guess because, you know, all these chains of commands, if you're not like a certain person, you're not necessarily supposed to give information. I understand that, but it's like, you're making me feel uneasy because you're not telling me anything. And then you're just like, you know, just shooing me out. I, I don't like that. Um, so we set our appointment again for 10 days. Um, but I took the liberty of myself because you're not gonna just not tell me stuff i have to look it up so i obviously went on on the internet to find out what it means if your baby is measuring two weeks behind and um i think personally it might be too soon to actually tell um and then another the ultrasound lady just kept saying like oh you need to come back to see if it's still progressing if it's still progressing like is if what's progressing like what are you talking about um again she can't answer any of my questions she, the nurse is going to talk to you um but yeah fetal growth restriction or in utero digestion restriction i think it's called um but it's basically your fetus isn't getting the nutrients it needs from your placenta and your um their umbilical cord and it could be a variety of factors that cause that to happen um doing my best not to blame myself for this because again i don't know why this is happening I'm also trying not to compare this to my first pregnancy because it was just perfect. Everything about having my daughter was perfect until my delivery, but that's another story. Um, but everything about her was perfect. There was no complications. Um, it was just, everything was good. So for me to get this information now, um it does make me a little bit concerned but i have um i have very high faith in god that you know my baby is healed and i will not be a sad story and um even if that is god's plan for me i'm i'm okay with that i have an amazing daughter an amazing husband an amazing family 
as much as it would hurt to lose this baby that's not happening and that's not my case um and so i just want to do my best to remain positive and um i don't want to let anybody down i'm happy that my husband is very supportive and um and basically told me if the worst that could happen is we have to do it again and you know that just brings me comfort that you know he's not um disappointed in me even though i didn't do anything But this just makes me want to, you know, take better care of myself and to pay attention to what I'm putting in my body and what I'm doing. I need to be a little easier on myself and stop trying to, you know, make a perfect home or make um, things be how they was when I wasn't pregnant. I'm extremely tired and I, I need my rest and I need to um, just take it easy. Uh, um, but everything will be okay everything is okay it's just really sad to hear but this is this is junior junior i'm so glad i got this photo um and i love you you're you're gonna be awesome as you can see how distraught i was to um, just like have those emotions to be treated that way to experience such an such a thing it was so different from when we were pregnant with our daughter and that appointment and and I just kind of knew like something was wrong but I increased my faith my faith tenfold like like I wasn't I wasn't talking nothing but Jesus and and I still am and I'm proud of myself for that because in all honesty, that has been the only thing that has been able to push me to this point. So then at our follow-up appointment on March 30th, this happened. Let's talk about it. So today, I got back from my second ultrasound today. And they have confirmed that um, the baby has no heartbeat and I need to have the DNC procedure tomorrow, which is like a planned medical abortion, I guess. I don't know. Um, today I feel, um, yes, I was discouraged hearing the news, but I am blessed to have found out this early and not to have a like prolonged pregnancy and to find out when I'm like you know expecting um to feel different things about like the baby moving or like wanting to hear the baby's heartbeat and all that other stuff so I'm glad that um I was able to figure out this out figure this out now um it is a bit discouraging but I do have faith that um god has a plan over my life and that like even though i'm going through this horrible time or this will be a horrible time i know that it is for the greater good um within the last 10 days my faith has increased tremendously um i put god before everything and and normally i would just put doubt before everything and so um even with them saying that i have to have this procedure or i had our suggesting that this should be done, I feel really confident and comfortable with the idea. I'm, I'm very much at peace um, with the choice that has to be made. Granted, it may not feel like that tomorrow or, you know, after the fact, but, but, I, but I am okay. Um, I do have joy in my heart. Um, the hardest part for me is explaining to my daughter um, what this means she's been extremely excited for a sibling and to be a big sister and i'm and she still is a big sister um 
it's 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 me wrapping my head around that that's to be honest the hardest part for me but um um excuse me i know everything will be okay so basically got to the doctor's office this morning um they called me pretty much right away got to the bag undressed um laid on the table or the chair whatever put my feet up they put the ultrasound probe in to my um, vagina. And then, uh, again, it wasn't in there for longer, much longer. And she looked and she was like, oh, doesn't look like the baby has grown any more than, than before. So that, that was like a little bit troubling. And then she was like, oh, I'm just gonna take some pictures of your uterus and your fallopian tubes and your ovaries, and then we'll um, go see the doctor. She did the heartbeat test and it looked exactly the same as the first time. Um, but my faith has been so high that I was just like, obviously, you know, God isn't, isn't going to, you know, say the opposite of what I'm thinking. And so, you know, everything must be all right. Um, but even to the the notion that like the baby hasn't grown anymore, um, you know, just made me concerned. Uh, so we got into a little backstory. Uh, because the treatment I received was so poorly by the OBs and the lack of information or the lack of um, conversation about what was going on, I switched to the midwives at my practice and I love the midwives. They helped me deliver uh, my first daughter. And so it only felt right to, you know, go back to them. And and so while in the waiting room, you know, the doctor came and talked to me and she was like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm running a little behind. I have to ask a little bit more questions or get confirmation for some things, but I'm going to come in and talk to you. Uh, so she comes in and she's uh, talking to us and she's just like, uh, so I have two options for you. Um, the baby has not grown as we were hoping. Um, there wasn't no heartbeat the first time you had your ultrasound and there isn't a heartbeat um, at this ultrasound. The two options are wait another 10 days for another ultrasound or uh, make the decisions to end the pregnancies and ending the pregnancies also worth another two options. Um, once she kind of said that I didn't have a heartbeat, the baby didn't have a heartbeat at the first ultrasound versus the second ultrasound as well, my brain kind of just went blank. Everything in, in me kind of just went like, yeah, that's like literally everything in my body was just kind of like frozen. And I was trying to like process like, you know, like, what do you like, what do you mean it didn't have a heart? Like, that's all that was running through my head. What do you mean it didn't have a heartbeat the first time? Nobody ever said that to me. Nobody ever told me anything. Like, what do you, like, now it makes so much sense why everybody was like, good luck, good luck. Um, which is just like, kind of like really upsetting. Like, I don't know who I can sue for that, but like, seriously, just very upsetting and, and, I don't know how many cases where if you go for your ultrasound, your first ultrasound and your baby doesn't have a heartbeat that they make you come back again because when when would it have a heartbeat? Like when would it when would it happen again? So um at first I did want to wait the 10 days again and um like give the baby a chance. But I was just like, if it's not, if it's not growing and, and it doesn't have a heartbeat, like why put all of my family through that, including myself, especially now that I know that it doesn't have a heartbeat, at least like from the first ultrasound to now, I just had faith that it wasn't growing. Not that it really wasn't even alive. Um, and so that was really troubling here. So, uh with quick confirmation from my husband and my and myself, we decided that um, we're going to elect to end the pregnancy. Uh, we chose to do the DNC, which is uh, a medical vacuum in your vagina to um, suck out all your pregnancy um, instead of taking the abortion pill where you'll have to um, 
pretty much come home and watch your baby die. Um, you will see all the blood, you will have all the cramping, extreme cramping. And um, that's honestly not at all the experience I wanna have. Um, at least with the DNC, by God's grace, I will be put under. And um, when I wake up, I will, will technically not be pregnant anymore. Um, I'm so grateful for my husband and that he was there because he asked a lot of questions that my brain honestly could not think of. The only question that I literally could think of was, if the baby was not having a heartbeat, why do I still have all the same pregnancy symptoms as if I would if the baby was alive and living? Um, and that's just because your body doesn't know that you've lost your baby yet. Um, she did say that I do have a considerable amount of hemorrhaging going on in my uterus. And it was only a matter of time before um, I would start bleeding. I guess what I experienced is a missed miscarriage, meaning that like um, your baby does is deceased, but you don't necessarily bleed or cramp right away. It does take a little like two weeks or so. And so really who's to say, um, who's to say when this baby um, went back to heaven? Um, I'm just, I'm honestly just glad that like everybody will be safe after this. And in all reality, we can try again. And I definitely want to try again because I was very, very much excited to um, have a baby again and to make my daughter a big sister. Um, how excited she was. I, I, I want to give her the gift of having somebody um, to be with her whenever or if, if anything happens to me and her dad. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that again. And I'm just, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm bummed and excited and bummed and happy. It's a weird, uh, grief is weird. Um, I know today I feel great. I'm, I'm grateful that I went through the experiences that I did a week ago because I was a complete wreck. I was very sad. Um, uh, like I had already mourned the death of my child, even though I didn't know what was going on, but, um, I'm glad God put me in that position to to feel that pain then and to be strong now um, because that's what it requires. Um, and so I'm just hoping for a great procedure tomorrow and um, looking forward to everything else that God has planned. I'm thankful for my friends and my family. I made the decision that like, as soon as I got the news, I called every single person that I told that I was pregnant. I just called them and told them because I didn't want to um, continue on and people ask me questions and I'm still trying to process things myself. Um, so I'm glad I just got it out the way and everybody was obviously super supportive of um, what needs to happen. And um, yeah, the only thing left is to tell Kamara, our daughter, um, what's going on and um, and, and just hope for the best that everything, you know, is is as God plans. Um, but never did I thought uh, I would be like in this position. Um, but my husband had to remind me, like humble me and remind me like, you know, not everything is going to be peaches and creams. Like you will have some sour, some sour cream someday. And um, I'm blessed to have a partner that supports supports me and encourages me through the sour cream because um, I know that when we are going to be blessed with a rainbow baby that what is there that like we won't have or won't be able to do. Um, the timing of this other baby was definitely, you know, not surprising, but I, I definitely didn't necessarily feel like we were in a position to uh, be prepared to, to, you know, continue our life the way it is and to bring a baby into it a lot was a lot's just going on a lot that we have planned and not to say that a lot won't be going on in the future as well but um i feel more more apt that in the future it would just be better god's timing is always right um and so i i'm i'm just very grateful i'm i feel very mature about the situation um 
not that that's a common feeling that you should have, but I, I am definitely, you know, just okay with what, what God has um, planned. Um, one thing I am looking forward to right now is eating a turkey sandwich. So I'm about to go to Panera Bread and get me an avocado bacon and turkey sandwich because I've been like dying to eat one and it would just, you know, really, really make me happy to have one. Um, I pray that God um, supports my decision as well and that like he, he will continue to be by me and bless me and um, encourage me to try again. Um, and yeah, this is a loss for everybody. So managing everybody's emotions and managing my own, it, my own is going to be, you know, maybe a challenge, but you know, I'm, I'm here for it. I trust God. I know things will turn out as he wants. And for anybody who is going through something like this or is experiencing something like that in the past or in your future, maybe, um, give yourself grace. It's not your fault. There's nothing you can do if that's what you're faced with. And um, I pray that you have faith that things will get better in due time and the blessing that God was going to provide for you or was trying to provide to you would be like provided tenfold and even better. And so I just am looking forward to that. I'm very blessed to already have a child that's thriving and doing well. I'm blessed to have a husband that supports wanting to do this again. And I'm, I'm just um, in a very, very thankful and blessed state. And I, I couldn't just be more proud of myself right now. So things are things are going to look up however they need to look up and um if i'm sad i'm sad and if i'm happy i'm happy and um that's just the way things are and that's just the way things are going to be yeah that that was as you can see troubling to hear and so on march 31st i had my scheduled dnc and yeah we we unfortunately lost our baby and it's been tough, but like I said, uh, God, Jesus, the Lord, uh, the good people up in heaven have been nothing but gracious to me and have provided me the comfort each hour. Because like I said, every second is honestly like different. One minute I'm like, oh my God. And then the next minute I'm like, oh my God. So I'm just really, really blessed to not, you know, to have my own life and to do things again and try again and you know make the best of what i currently have i said i'm very grateful to my friends and my family my community my village they have been nothing but supportive checking on me going out with me hanging out with me doing things with me um, to keep my mind off it i will say that for the few weeks i was pregnant it was definitely tiring and exhausting if you've been there you know like the first trimester is is <laughs> curl the first trimester is a you need your panties you need them you need them up you know even talking about this now it's kind of like you know a little it's like a little fresh band-aid like ah. but i don't ever want to feel embarrassed or ashamed of the situation one in four women have miscarriages and to be honest like a lot of the adult women or well, older women and even um some ladies that are my age have had miscarriages as well and you know you're always like shocked to hear that because you're like oh my god you never said anything you never you never blah 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 but like ain't nobody gonna be sharing that at least like not until it's like important to bring up so i want everybody to just know not don't feel bad for me pray for us keep us in your prayers it's a blessing to be a mom it's a blessing to bring another child into this world and i just know that like the loss of my child isn't going to be in vain. But for anybody who may have experienced this, know that God has a, a plan for your life and a promise to not forsake you. And, and I truly believe like I have not been forsaken. Everything happens for a reason, you know, whether good or bad. And if you have the faith that this was done for some sort of purpose, then, then just, you know, trust the Lord that yes, this, this will all somehow make sense in, in the future. Uh, so with that being said, let's, 
let's uh you know cheer up i don't know i'm i'm a crazy person literally like i i love to be positive and i love to remain like bright and sherry yes i have my days don't get me wrong i'm human but for the most part i really love to to have joy and smile and laugh and joke around so just just bear with me yeah but that's been my life all this situation has taught me which is honestly so funny i think it was after i found out i was pregnant i had the weirdest dream right i own my car it's been paid off for a while but in the dream the car was being repossessed like like straight up out of my driveway like they were taking it and i was like but that's my car like i paid for it it's like mine like it's mine like why would you take it and after i had the dream i was just like nothing is promised in this world like that is the the reoccurring theme that kept like playing back in my head after the fact i don't know if that was you know god preparing my heart for this news because i i did pray like after i had that dream like i did pray to god like like please don't make this like a a comparison or a futition to what may possibly happen or what has already happened to me but in the same breath i'm i'm thankful for that train of thought because it made me comfortable with the idea that like you know yes life is not promised we have no control over it any one of us at any moment and second in time can just drop like that in the blink of an eye and so what it's just really taught me is to cherish each moment take pictures like record everything if you need to and i'm i'm so grateful that i do so that i can always like look back on memories and and just be like oh yeah i remember this i remember that i know exactly what i was thinking when that happened so again i'm just i'm just very grateful that i got to experience what i got to experience and i got to be closer to god in this moment and for the rest of my life like i will i will never ever believe that god tries to play me or play anybody honestly and if you just trust him there's there's really nothing that can feel bad yes he promised that you know there will be rainy days but the sun will always shine and and the sh i feel the sun shining on me every single day that i am breathing and living so it does take people you know some time to have that train of thought or to be comfortable with that fact but i'm just i'm just glad that I'm, I'm able to, you know, step forward with my head high as much as it hurts, as much as it bothers me. I'm just truly, truly blessed. So yes, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. Please uh, like, subscribe, share, uh, tell all your friends. And I hope you know how much God loves you and how much that I appreciate you. And I am just really, really grateful. So yes, please 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 <coughs> click the subscribe button get to know me more i want to you know share more and post more so i'm going to start doing that and all will be well bye